The former Soviet Republic of Uzbekistan is best known as one of the world's largest producers of cotton. But while the industry brings the government a fortune, the people of Uzbekistan remain stricken by poverty. Artiza Katrina and Gruchelva met human rights groups who say the cotton industry thrives on illegal child labor. Such is the fear in the eyes of these children. You'd think they were picking opium, not cotton. Hmm. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, the produce harvested with illegal child labor is enjoying the glare of flashing cameras. Gulnara Karimova, daughter of the Uzbek president, is presenting her new collection. Forbes magazine ponders on how she's managed to be so commercially successful. Well, I, I, I graduated from Harvard, so. <laughs> so, it's a, it's a very good school, you know, in terms of, you know, giving you great tools. The tools of Uzbekistan are children as young as seven who work an average of 70 hours a week instead of going to school. And an education is not the only thing they are missing out on, with no heating, proper beds or drinking water. Mothers are powerless. Some of them stood up for their kids' protection. They were arrested, taken to cotton fields. They would be forced to work in the day and would be mass raped at night. With the help of forced child labor, Uzbekistan produces around 1 million tons of cotton, enough to make 1 billion T-shirts. The cotton is sold abroad, except to the 60-plus retailers, including Levi and H&M, who have pledged not to buy Uzbek cotton because the harvest is so abusive. This boycott sends a message to the Uzbek government that enslaving children is never chic. But Gulnara Karimova, who is also Uzbekistan's ambassador to the UN and the deputy foreign minister, refutes the claims. And she was also outraged when New York Fashion Week banned her collection from their catwalks two weeks ago. But human rights groups applauded. It. it was a terrible message for the fashion industry uh, to be sending that they would lend a high-profile platform to the senior official of one of the world's most repressive governments. The government about six years ago engaged in uh, the disproportionate use of force against mostly peaceful protesters in the eastern city of Andijan. Andijan is the bloodiest chapter in President Islam Karimov's two decades in office. In 2005, his forces opened fire on an anti-government demonstration, killing 5,000 people. For other so-called dissidents, jail sentences are common. Bahadir Chariev spent three years in prison for speaking out after his prosperous business was taken over by the president's people. Karimov's family is an organized criminal mob. All sectors of the economy, all profitable businesses are under his control. If you go to WikiLeaks, you'll see that the U.S. ambassador calls Karimov's daughter a mafia princess. But all this will stay just words while the war continues in Afghanistan. Karimov is an important ally there, and everyone will close eyes to his crimes. But Libya, Egypt and Tunisia were once important allies too. However, the Arab Spring showed just how quickly things can change. So what today appears to be nothing more than a failed fashion show could tomorrow become a failed state, swept away by those silenced for too long. Ekaterina Grachova, RT.